Conversation is a totally alternative interview series with women who have a story or experience to share. Relationships, sex, kids, career. We're basically talking about the universal language of women. We are so, you know, self-critical and so judgmental and so perfectionist and we have to look like this all the time. We have to look like what women look like in magazines and we have to work so hard. It's just forgive yourself every now and then. at the beginning when I first started doing stand-up and I was doing so many spots a night I was trying to do like five six spots a night so wait I, wait wait five or six a night five or six in a night. different places in different places did so you I have would, roller skates or I like did. how did you get around <laughs> I just had fear <laughs> I was propelled me. by fear yes. and caffeine fear is much faster than roller skates <laughs> trust me being on stage was the only time I was able to be present it was the only time Oh. I didn't have a pit in my stomach. It was like oxygen for me to get on stage and do stand-up. Growing up, I wasn't like heard a lot and as a child, and I get very obsessed with injustices. And so being on stage was the perfect sort of um, vehicle for you. To me, one-on-one uh -huh. -on -one with someone with true intimacy, that is the most terrifying thing possible. I being, love that. That being, calms me down. Yeah, well, I'm glad because I'm Thank sweating. You. I'm swampy Thank in you. my pants. I'm like, <laughs> Thank you. You oh, being God. here right now is just calming me. All this eye Thank contact you. is giving me a nervous breakdown. <laughs> Anxiety. But uh, being in front of, you know, 500 <laughs> drunk strangers, I feel very at home. It's like a family reunion. It's like my childhood <laughs> all over again. It's very familiar yeah, to me. Yeah, you recreated your childhood right, right there. there. The Only these Five people. times a week. Five times a night. <laughs> Only these people give me money instead of me giving them money. <laughs> but that's, you know, it was the thing that kept me sane, you yeah. know, in my 20s. It was the thing that, I mean, my brain was like on fire and I was in a lot of pain in my 20s and it's the one time being on stage that I felt safe. And, and you I felt, felt like you. That I felt authentic. Now, when did that shift into you wanting to express yourself in different mediums? Because yeah. you've always, you've, you write your stand-up. Mm -hmm. But when did it tilt and you thought, okay, I'm, I'm going to expand here. I'm yeah. going to write something. For, I want to be, I want to do a television show. Like when did it grow? Yeah, it's weird because I never thought I was going to do the television show I did. You know, I, I came up with that idea because I was in a relationship with a guy for four years and the idea of marriage just didn't, it not only didn't come up with us, but I was like horrified and terrified by the idea. Why? I was, because I come from so much divorce, which right. a lot of people do, yeah, but I saw, you know, like a couple divorces by the time, you know, I was 15 and they were all so acrimonious and so bad. A lot of my friends didn't want to get married and there was Interesting. Just this a shift new happened. thing yeah. where they were kind of like not in any rush. So I got sort of fascinated by that and so I wrote a pilot about it. I had no expectations. Like I just was like, I'm going to have fun with this. This is never going to happen anyway and stand up is my number one. This is like a fun backup plan and it ended up working out. I think almost because of that. Right, you weren't so desperate for you I didn't went need into it. it. I didn't need it. Yeah. I wasn't like, this is my thing and I want to be the next Seinfeld. I was just kind of like, this is like going to be a fun. And I think the key to that as well is that you had something else that you loved doing. By the time you get to your job or your relationship, you should be full already because otherwise you're going to need too much from it and desperation and fear are going to come into play, which are enemies of creativity they really and are. intimacy. They really are. So I think the reason the sitcom worked is because every day I was like, all right, I got to get out of here because I have to do stand up. As far as like how hard I work, which I think people bring up a lot. You work very hard. My mom worked and she worked really hard. And I grew up seeing a woman work incredibly hard, always in heels, always with a briefcase, always, you know, doing stuff. So I, it never occurred to me that women shouldn't work hard. I love your contribution oh, to, gosh. you know, to women in the media. I really do. Thank Everything you. you do has this mm -hmm. through line of authenticity and strength. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there are so few people who across the board, you look at their work. Yeah. That's the theme for you. It's yeah. the common thread and mm -hmm. I admire it and, and I there are times it. though, you have to be vigilant about protecting that. So there are times I'm in the writer's room where someone's like, oh, she says this. I'm like, that makes her sound stupid. It's a funny joke but it makes her sound stupid. Are there any other women in your right Yes, room? I have half women, half men. Great. Yeah, they're fantastic. But half of my men are basically women. <laughs> but you know- it's, Honorary women. But, totally, but it's interesting. Like I'm like, that makes her seem weak. That makes her seem upset. Like that's just, it's right, funny. Right, you can't zone out for a minute. Otherwise a that stuff A lot of times you in. have to be very conscious all the time because it can get away from you and slip yeah. through your fingers. Just especially in the grind of, you have to write so fast. You have to do so much so fast. There's so many easy, quick jokes, but you're like, no, that really throws this character under the bus or, oh, is insulting to women or a step back or you know if I was a young girl watching that it would give me the wrong message I wouldn't want my kids watching that you know so it's something I try to be conscious of a well, lot. Well I commend your commitment to that because it is so evident in, in what you put out in the world. But it's not like I'm going out of my way to write these 
you know, strong women. I'm like, these are just what the women, women. I know are like. I agree. These are just women. I agree. This isn't like I'm creating this character. I'm like, these are all the women I know right. act like but this. We just haven't been represented. But men that write most of the media see women as these like irrational, flighty. That's oh, a, that's through that perspective. PMSing all the time. Yes. You know, needy messes. That that's what you see. But I'm like, that's just not the way I see women. Well, that's the reality. Not women. Yeah, I'm just writing reality. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned. I'm with you, you know? sister. What is your biggest vice? I define vice as something that you enjoy that is also bad for you. Is exactly. that a, is that a good that would be the definition? Good, yes, absolutely. I'd probably say work because when it starts to be something cross the bell curve of something that starts being bad for you mm -hmm. or making your life tough or compromising your health, that's when it becomes a vice. So I think that work, sometimes I take it a little bit too far. What is the best piece of advice you've ever been given? Someone said to me once, a comedian at the comedy store, and I never saw him again after this. He was like an open micer, and he just, you know, I was doing, I dropped something, and I picked it up, and I like cleaned it off. I did something really meticulously that was really mundane task. And he goes, you know, the way you do everything is the way you do anything. Mm. And I was like, whoa, that's so intense. It's true. Okay, what would you tell your 14 year old self? <laughs> oh man, if my 14 year old self could like comprehend this idea that the idea of like your parents are just people. They're not heroes. What's your favorite sex position? I tend to be submissive in the bedroom. Like I like that. And you know, I like a man to take charge. So I actually like if a man can make it happen while I'm on the bottom, there's nothing better. Two are like, are we being attacked? I actually think we might be. <laughs> We should, well, you know, we should just go on CNN real fast to make sure. Crazy day. It's good to know the economy is very well. Jet blue. I know. Up their prices. I thought there were no flights out of Burbank, Eliza. <laughs> I mean, we can never get flights out of Burbank. Never. I know. Who knew? Like,